Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for your work, uh, Chair Klobuchar, to pull us together for this joint hearing. Uh, thank the ranking member, Senator Fisher, uh, and members of the Senate Rules Chamber or Senate Rules Committee uh, for, host for hosting today's joint hearing uh, in the upper chamber, as I think of it as the smaller chamber. Uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> uh, we thank uh, our ranking member Morelli and all the members of the House Rules or the House Administration Committee uh, for joining as well. Today's hearing is historic in several ways. It's the first time in modern history that the full Capitol Police Board will testify before both authorizing committees. It's also the first time the board will testify before both of those committees in a joint session. And I'd like to start by recognizing, as uh, Chair Klobuchar said, uh, by recognizing officers Jacob Chestnut and Detective John Gibson, who lost their lives 25 years ago while defending our Capitol. As we remember their sacrifice, I'd like to thank all members in the department who work every day to keep members, staff, and visitors uh, and their fellow officers safe. We must continue to work to support our officers and ensure they have access to important resources, like those provided through the Howard Lieben Good Center for Wellness, which was recently established within the United States Capitol Police. Supporting our officers also means bringing transparency and accountability to the United States Capitol Police Board. The voting membership of the United States Capitol Police Board hasn't changed since 1873. Now, members of the board, all of you, are new to your positions within the last two years. This is a unique opportunity, a unique moment in time, where we have an opportunity, I think in particular, to depoliticize capital security. I'm concerned that historically speaking, security decisions have been influenced sometimes by politics and political considerations rather than security needs. I can give you a couple examples. The board previously signed off on assembling a fence around the Capitol despite no actionable intelligence. And on the House side, former board members allowed selective enforcement of magnetometers just off the House floor. The House side remained closed for COVID-19 long after the Senate began loosening its restrictions. Let me be clear, security should not be political. As chairman of the Committee on House Administration, I'm committed to depoliticizing capital security and establishing greater accountability for the board. New board members have made progress towards increasing transparency and accountability, and I thank you for that. This includes closing the 2017 GAO report recommendations, establishing the quarterly board fora, and providing greater communication with its congressional oversight committees. I'm also encouraged that both the House and the Senate Sergeant Arms were actively addressed some of our concerns regarding accountability and transparency in their, written, in their written testimonies for today's hearing. Those are stepped in the right direction, but there's still more work to do. As we work to increase transparency and accountability, the U.S. Capitol Police Office of Inspector General is an important tool in the toolkit. Congress has directed the office to make its reports publicly available. Last week, during a subcommittee on oversight hearing, the Office of Inspector General said that the board is stalling the, publicly, the public release of its reports. I'm troubled that the office lacks the independence necessary to conduct thorough and trusted analysis of the department. Overall, more must be done to ensure greater transparency, accountability, and depoliticization of the board. I remain concerned that there's been certain instances in which politics have seeped into the board, impacting its decision-making. We must seize this opportunity to make meaningful reforms to the board. The board should be focused on effective oversight of the U.S. Capitol Police and not the day-to-day -day management of the department. Ultimately, this is about giving the brave men and women of the U.S. Capitol support, this is ultimately about giving the brave men and women of the U.S. Capitol Police the support they need. Thank you, and I yield back.